Now moving on to our next topic on mobile automation with APM, we are going to look at uh, what is the APM inspector and how we can set it up on Windows. So let's first start with what is APM inspector. Now it is basically a GUI assistant tool for APM, which helps you to uh, visually inspect uh, different mobile applications. Uh, it uh, shows the application page screenshot, the page source, and how you can interact uh, with that particular application from APM. So it's basically um, a tool through which you can find out what are the element properties in your mobile application. It is very similar to some of the other tools uh, which are present for different automation tools, be it for Selenium or some other tool where you can inspect different elements in your application. So this is a similar tool, but uh, it provides you with a GUI where you can inspect all the elements in your application. So different features of these tools include uh, the APM server details, which can be entered here, and then you can start a new session with different capabilities uh, for your mobile application or your mobile device. Then uh, you can interact with the app. So uh, it will show you the screenshot and then the element properties uh, which you want to uh, choose while interacting with those elements. You can search for elements, you can interact with them, uh, you can run APM driver commands. So all of these features are available. Then uh, it has got specific integrations for different cloud platforms. Some of them uh, are Source Labs, Browser Stack, Lambda Test, uh, Perfecto, and Expeditest. So you can directly integrate uh, APM Inspector with these cloud platforms. Now uh, let's go ahead and let's set up uh, APM Inspector on our uh, Windows machine. And let's see how we can start this APM Inspector tool um, and how we can configure it. Here, the first step is to download the APM Inspector. And for that, you can just search for APM Inspector and then you will find these GitHub pages. Uh, go to the releases page for APM, APM Inspector. There you'll find the latest uh, version of the APM Inspector. You can also see what are the new features, what platforms are supported for this particular tool uh, and some other details. So here you will find all the different installers for all the different platforms. Uh, depending on which platform you are using, you can download that particular installer here. So here, uh, just uh, click on show all 26 assets and then uh, you'll find for Windows as well. So choose uh, the installer which is best suited for your machine. Um, I'm going to choose this winx64.exe. Uh, that's the latest one. So I'm going to now download this particular tool here. And once uh, it completes download, then we'll see how we can install this particular tool. The installation uh, should be pretty simple. You just need to follow uh, the prompts which are displayed on the setup, and then you should be able to install this particular tool. If you get any particular security alerts uh, from your PC, then uh, just go ahead and run it. So, we will go ahead and install this. So once the uh, installation is complete, uh, you can start running the APM inspector and uh, it should launch this GUI tool, which is known as the APM inspector. So now that the inspector is installed and open, you should get a screen like this. Uh, and here uh, we can enter different details like the APM server details, or you can also choose from uh, the different cloud providers. So there are several cloud providers. We have already spoken about this. There are some popular ones like Source Labs, Browser Stack, um, and also a Lambda Test, right? And there are many more. Now, depending on uh, the service provider which you are using, you can choose that. And then uh, once you choose that, it will take you to a different tab. And there uh, you can enter the details for that particular cloud provider. Like here, if I have chosen source labs, I need to enter a source username, a source access key, and then uh, the data center and any proxy, host, port details, and some other details, okay? But if you are working um, with an APM server, then we need to enter uh, the host of that particular server, the port, and the remote path. 
Now, uh, for the remote part, uh, if you're using APM2 like we are using, we don't need to uh, change it to slash WD slash hub. It's only required for APM1. And if you're running APM locally, then uh, we don't even need to enter the remote host and port. It will be set to default, which is 127.0.1, and port will be 4723. Okay, so if you don't enter this host and port, uh, APM would consider that you are running it on local and it will try to connect with this particular host and port. Now, there's also an option of entering some advanced settings like uh, allowing unauthorized certificates or using a proxy. Now, once uh, you have entered um, the server details, the next thing is to enter the session details, right? Now here, uh, most of the details are related to the capability. Now these capabilities are nothing but different configurations of your uh, devices. Uh, it could be emulators uh, or it could be real devices. But uh, based on these capabilities, uh, APM would decide which device uh, it has to create a session with, right? Now there are two ways of doing it. Either you can enter the capabilities here or if you are running a session in the background, you can attach it to that particular session by giving the session ID here. Uh, now, if you want to enter capabilities, you can either enter it one by one here in the capability builder section, or you can directly also edit the JSON representation and you can directly write the JSON for the, your capabilities. Now we'll discuss more about capabilities when we uh, create a project and then uh, we enter the capabilities in that project so that we can connect to a session. But here, uh, if you want, uh, there are some mandatory capabilities uh, and there are some optional capabilities, right? So depending on what device you are using um, and what applications you are using, you have to uh, know uh, these capabilities or you need to find out from your device and then enter it here. Now, some of the mandatory capabilities are platform name and uh, the automation name, right? So we can enter here platform name. And this uh, will be the type, which is currently text. It's correct. Uh, there are also other types here. And then here, the value would be Android. Now, if you're working on an iOS, then the platform name would be iOS. And then the automation name, so you have to type APM and then automation name. And then again, it will be text and the value would be UI automated too. Obviously for iOS, you have a different automation. So these are the two mandatory uh, capabilities which you need to mention when you are trying to create a session. Obviously you will require a lot more capabilities um, apart from this so you would require something called a app package or you would also require some additional capabilities if you have got lots of devices then um, you need to choose between those devices right so you could also provide a device name we'll look at this more when we uh, set up a project and from there we are trying to create a session rather than the apm inspector also uh, if you want to create a session from your apm inspector there are two things required first the apm server should be running in the background and second you need a device uh, to be also opened in the background if you are working uh, with a emulator then the emulator device should be open if you are working with a real device then it should be connected right now if i try to start a session here it will throw an error that it could not connect to the apm server url which is quite correct right now if i go to a cmd and I type here APM to start my session. So now you will see uh, the APM server has started. And now if I go here and try to start a session again, you will see more logs are now popping up on our command line tool where we have started the APM server, okay? So mostly you will see uh, it is trying to connect to a virtual device. Okay, so here you can see uh, it is not able to find any online devices and so it has not connected to any device and then after a couple of times uh, it will then um, return an error and it will stop that particular session. 
right it was not able to create a session basically here and you will get the same error right here on the inspector as well fail to create session and unknown server side error occurred okay so i'm not going to start a session right now um, i can start the virtual device in the background but uh, you still require uh, application package so we will do that later on once we install uh, the application package into um, our virtual device or the emulator and then we will start a session from uh, the project which we have created but this is how you can um, set up your APM inspector and you can configure the server details uh, if you're using a cloud provider you can also configure the cloud provider uh, you can also set your capabilities and then start a session and then uh, we will also see later on how we can inspect elements uh, in the APM inspector that's all for this particular video if you have any questions then please leave it in the comments if you like this video then please subscribe to our channel thanks for watching and i will see you in the next video